So I've never really put much thought into strain gauges or really experimented with different strain gauges. I've always been playing 45 to 105 on four string, 45 to 125 on five string. I've been playing that for over 20 years now and it's always worked out great. I never really saw a need to try anything different. It feels great and sounds great to me. All the bass players that have my favorite tone seem to play that gauge. And like I said, never really saw a reason to try anything different. But that changed recently because I recently found out that Victor Wooten actually plays a really, really light set of strings. And the reason I found this out is because I was browsing through the DR Strings website and I was looking at their pure blue strings, which I play every once in a while. And I saw that he actually has a signature set which is a very light set of 40 to 95. And it's so light that they actually had to make a signature set just for him because they didn't make a set that light. And that kind of got me curious. Why does he play such light strings? What benefits could that offer? What could that change in my playing and my sound? So I decided to experiment with it, try it out. And actually I did a little bit more research and I found out that, you know, a lot of those shredder bass players, you know those guys you see on Instagram just going up and down playing super fast, all these crazy licks, a lot of them play really light strings too. So, you know, I decided to kind of experiment, check it out and see what these strings felt and sounded like, what the pros and cons are, and just what would change if I had strings that light. So I went to the local store right by me, I found these strings. Now I'm not endorsing this brand, this brand is not sponsoring this video, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but this is actually the only brand, the only string I was able to find in those gauges. And that's another thing with really light gauges is they're very hard to find. When you're playing 45 to 105 or 45 to 125, which is what I'm used to playing, it's a very common gauge, it's very easy to find. You can pretty much walk into any store that sells strings and you can find that gauge in many different brands, so you have a lot of options. When it comes to these really light ones, they're not very common, so they're kind of hard to find. I mean, obviously online you can find them, but if you just walk into a store, they're not that easy. This was the only one I was able to find. The gauges are 40, 55, 75, and 95. So I put them on this base. Obviously that's a five string, uh, sorry, four string set. This is a five string base. So the, the B string is still the 125 for my DR strings. That's what I usually play is DR strings. I wish I had DR strings in this gauge for this experiment, but I just didn't and I couldn't find them. So I just got that one. So I have those four here and I've been playing around with them for a few weeks now. And wow very surprising the difference. I mean, they feel completely different, they sound very different, and they feel really soft, and there's not a lot of tension on the strings versus what I was playing. I mean, you can bend these strings very easily. You can hold it there, and I, I don't know if I can even get calluses playing these strings because they're so light, so easy to play, and they sound obviously a lot thinner than the heavier gauge that I was playing before, which is great for like solo bass arrangement type stuff, which I've done a lot of on this channel. So if you play a lot of the chordal stuff, it sounds a lot clearer and not as muddy as you would get with the heavier gauges. So for that kind of stuff, you know, I'm surprised I never really experimented with this before because it really sounds really clear. And even in the A and uh, D string down here, it really sounds a lot clearer and less muddy, which I really liked. Now, Here's the issue with it is like I said, it's great for chordal playing and solo arrangements and stuff like that. But if you're actually playing bass, like in a band, in a rhythm section, you're playing rock or pop or R&B or stuff like that, it is very, very thin sounding, which I didn't really like. Like I wouldn't play this if I'm playing in a band or if I'm playing just like regular bass playing. For solo arrangements, for chordal playing, really cool. But even with solo bass arrangements, when you're tapping like the lower notes, it just doesn't have that bottom that the thicker strings have. Like when I'm playing my regular 45 to 105 and I tap the strings down here, I get a really deep, bright low that sounds almost piano-like. And when I do it with this one, 
it just sounds very, very thin and almost guitar-like. Like the tone is very thin down here. I'm not a big fan of how the low notes sound, but for the chord stuff, like I said, you really can't beat it. And another thing too is the slap tone. Not a big fan. I mean, one of my favorite slap tones is Marcus Miller. That for me is like the holy grail of slap tones. It's one of the greatest slap sounds, one of my favorite slap sounds and what I've always aspired to sound like. And with these strings, it's just very, very thin sound. Right, sounds a lot thinner. And actually, if you listen to Victor Wooten slapping and you compare it to Marcus Miller slapping, you can tell there's a huge difference in tone. Marcus Miller sounds a lot fatter, a lot lower, just more punchy, more powerful. And Victor Wooten's slap tone is really, really thin. And it's because he's playing these really light strings. <laughs> Now, like I said on the high end, you know, you get a lot of clarity there and a lot of techniques are also a lot easier to play on these strings, which I found to be very surprising. I didn't expect that it would be that much of a difference, but certain like, especially Victor Wooten type stuff. Like, is a lot easier to do on these strings and harmonics ring out really well on them as well. So as you can see for a lot of the solo stuff, the sound of the tone is a lot nicer. So I can see why Victor Wooten plays this, but for regular band playing, you're playing rock, you're playing pop. If you play any kind of drop tuning, definitely you don't want these strings, they're way too light. Um, you need at least 45 to 105 if you're doing like the drop tuning kind of stuff or maybe even heavier if you're going like drop C or even lower. And if you play aggressively with a pick, this is not gonna be great. Really for general bass playing, rhythm section playing, I didn't like the sound of this at all. But for all like the solo bass arrangements, the Victor Wooten flashy type of stuff, you know, this is very, very easy to work with, very, very light. You know, like I said, I don't know if I can even get calluses playing these strings because they're so light, they're so easy to bend so easy to uh, do a lot of things with. And generally, I don't really like to focus too much on gear. I like to put my focus on playing, really working on your technique, on your knowledge of the fretboard, your musical knowledge, and really getting your playing up to speed before you even think about gear at all. Because some guys will focus way too much on gear, like what amp should I use? What cable should I use? Should I get an ash body with a maple neck or an alder body with this? It's like, who cares, right? Get your playing together first, get your technique, your knowledge of the fretboard, get all that before you start worrying about little details that may affect your sound or not. But it's undeniable that there are certain aspects of gear that can influence your playing in a positive or negative way. And one of them is your strings and your string gauges. So like I said, depending on the type of playing you're looking to do, you know, you're trying to do all the Victor Wooten stuff, but you have really heavy strings and maybe you have high action on your bass, it's gonna be very hard to do that stuff. You know, a lot of those like guys that are like the shredder guys, not only are they using very light strings, they also have ramps on their basses, which is helping them here as well. So, you know, there are certain aspects of gear which can hurt your playing if you're trying to mimic a certain style of playing and you don't have the right equipment for it. But again, don't put too much emphasis on gear, experiment a little bit, find what you like, what works for you, and then just stick with that, which is what I've done. Like I said, I played 45 to 105 my whole life, 45 to 125 on five string. Never really thought too much of it until I finally got to the point where my playing is at a place where, you know, I'm starting to be comfortable with it and I'm starting to look at other aspects of what I can change in my gear or my playing to achieve different results. And this is one that I really like. Now, am I gonna be sticking with light strings? Possibly, you know, I'm still kind of experimenting with it. Like I said, I really like it for solo bass arrangements and stuff like that, but I do miss the, you know, just those deep lows, like the power and the fatness and big of those lows in the lower notes here. So I might even start experimenting where I use my typical gauges on the E and A string and I keep these light gauges on the D and G. That's the next thing I wanna experiment to see how that sounds, if that sounds, 
clearer in the chordal stuff, but still has that heaviness of the lows here. So I just wanted to share with you guys my experience trying out these different string gauges. Hopefully you found that interesting. Hopefully it helps you in some way or answers some questions you might have had as far as string gauges. And yeah, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure to like this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.